Hi, I'm Cheyenne. Welcome to this part of the D5 render tutorial. In this session, we're going to render this chair and ottoman in D5 render. Before we get started, I should mention that the modeling and unwrapping of these objects were covered in previous videos, which I'll link here. Feel free to check them out too. Alright, first we need to import the required object. So, click on the import icon, select the file you want, which in this case is an FBX file, and wait for it to load. Once it's imported, select it and place it in the scene. The first thing we need to do is apply materials. To do this, go to the assets section where you can find various categories of materials. Select the wood category and pick a material for your chair. I'm choosing the poplar material for my chair. Click on the object you want to apply the material to. I'll repeat the same process for my ottoman. I'll go to the fabric section, scroll down, and select white canvas for the ottoman and apply it by clicking on the object. For the background object, I'll go to the plastic section. Choose ordinary light plastic and apply it to the background object. Now, we need to make some initial adjustments to the materials. Click on the Material Picker icon and then click on the object you want to adjust. I'll select the ottoman and change the material size since the texture appears too large. I'll go to the Inspector window, scroll down to the UV section, and increase the stretch value so the material repeats more and appears smaller. That looks better. Using the same method, I'll click the Material Picker icon and select the background object. I'll adjust the roughness and specular values since I don't want it to be too reflective. I'll increase the roughness and reduce the specular so there is almost no reflection. These were the initial material adjustments. Now, let's move on to the scene lighting. After the main lighting setup, we'll come back and tweak the materials again. To add lighting, go to the Add Light section and insert a rectangle light into the scene. I'll place it here, move it upwards, and rotate it to face the objects. Then, I'll move it back slightly. The circle you see represents the light's radius. To increase the radius, go to the inspector window and raise the attenuation radius value. Next, to create additional lights, we don't need to use that light again. I'll hold shift and use the gizmo arrows to duplicate the previous light. I'll adjust its angle and position so it lights the objects from a different direction. I'll repeat this process by holding shift and using the gizmo again to create another light, adjusting its placement as needed. This way, we've set up our studio lighting. To remove the environment light and rely only on our custom lights, go to the environment section and reduce the sunlight intensity to its minimum. Now, as you can see, only the lights we created are illuminating the scene.
I feel like I need to move the rectangle light back a bit more for better control over the scene's exposure. To control exposure manually, go to the effects panel and turn off auto exposure. Now the exposure is fully in our control. The next step is setting up the camera and framing the scene. Go to the image section to adjust the camera settings. First, I'll change the focal length to adjust the lens. I'll set the aspect ratio to define the frame more clearly. After adjusting the camera, to save this setup and avoid resetting the frame later, go to Create New Scene and click on it. Now I'll exit the image mode and return to the default view. I want to adjust the chair's reflection since it looks too shiny. Using the Material Picker, I'll select the chair, go to the inspector, and lower the specular value while increasing roughness. I'll also reduce the normal intensity to make the texture appear less bumpy. Since I've created a scene, I can return to the saved frame anytime by clicking on it in the scene list. Now, I want to adjust the lights I added. I'll select this light and move it back slightly. I'll bring this one closer to the objects to create more shadows in that area. Returning to the scene, you can see that the shadows have deepened, and the reflections are better controlled. I still feel like the chair's material needs slight adjustments, so I'll use the material picker again, select the chair, and tweak the normal, specular, and roughness values a bit more to make the material smoother. Now it looks good. Going back to the lighting adjustments, I'll select this light and reposition it slightly to create shadows inside the chair. The adjustments seem sufficient now, and you can see how shadows have formed both inside the chair and on the floor. Now, we need to apply some final effects and camera adjustments before rendering the final image. Go to the image section, adjust the aspect ratio, and set the preset size to 2K, or higher if needed. Then, I'll adjust the effects. Since we already adjusted exposure, I'll now slightly darken the shadows for a richer look. I'll scroll down and increase the vignette effect to darken the edges of the image slightly. Most importantly, I'll enable Ambient Occlusion AO, to enhance the contact shadows. Adjusting the radius will control the intensity. I'll also turn on AO Overlay Preview to see the effect live and adjust the intensity further. I'll slightly reduce the shadows to avoid making them too dark. Everything seems ready now. Once you're satisfied with the adjustments, click the render icon, choose the save location, and wait for the render to complete. After reviewing the final render, if there are any issues, you can make corrections. For example, the edges here appear too dark. To fix this, I'll go back into the software, rotate the light a bit, and move it back to brighten the background wall.
I'll also select another light and increase its radius. Returning to the scene, the dark corner issue seems resolved. I'll check the effects one more time, quickly reapply them, and finalize the render. And here you have the final render. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial.